I would like to share with you today about what the Holy Spirit wants to help you with. The Holy Spirit wants to help you with this. There are 10 things that the Holy Spirit wants to help you with today. Holy Spirit was sent as our helper. He helps us. He wasn't sent only to be a guarantee of our redemption as Christians, only as a guarantee that we are going to heaven, but He was sent with a specific assignment to help you. And there are, these are 10 things He wants to help you with today. And so as we dive into them, I want you to open up your heart and prepare yourself because in these 10 areas, you can receive help. You know, we all need help. <laughs> Come on somebody, amen. Drop this in the comments below. We need help. We need help with our families. We need help with our health. We need help with so many things. And do you ever fish? Do you ever feel like sometimes, man, if I could only get some help, if I could only get some help with my homework, if I can only go get some help with my finance, if somebody could come alongside and just help me to pay these bills, if somebody could just come alongside and help me with my relationship with my spouse, man, if I could only get some help with my kids, if I can only get some help with my ministry. Sometimes we don't have the finances, we don't have the resources to uh, buy help. But today I want to present to you 10 areas of your life where the Holy Spirit is there to help. All you got to do is ask. All you got to do is lean on Him. All you got to do is pause and say, Holy Spirit, help me in this area. Jesus called the Holy Spirit a helper. Jesus called the Holy Spirit our helper. That word helper means encourager, teacher, comforter, strengthener, the one who stands by, our counselor, our redeemer, our defender, our friend, intercessor, advocate. So many, pretty much all of that encompasses. And right now let's dive in into the 10 things the Holy Spirit wants to help you with right now. Number one, the Holy Spirit wants to make you holy. He wants to help you to become holy. The Bible says in Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 that we experience sanctification by the Holy Spirit, meaning He sets us apart. He makes us holy. Secondly, the Holy Spirit wants to produce a Christ-like attitude in you. One of the things that I struggle with, you probably struggle with, all of us struggle with, is with our attitude. Attitude is how you respond to things. You can't control what happens to you. You can control it with how you respond to it. And really, majority of our problems don't necessarily come from the things we can't control, but from the things we can control. Something happens. Somebody treats you in a certain way. And the Holy Spirit doesn't just want to create your life in such a way where you are never faced with challenges, where He is standing by and says, I want to help you with how you respond to the things. Most of us would of course rather have the Holy Spirit prevent and keep away all the bad things, all the bad people, all the negative circumstances so that we don't have to rely on the Holy Spirit for Christ-like attitude. He wants to give you, help you develop a different attitude toward things. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23. As I develop closer relationship with the Holy Spirit, I started to recognize He's far more interested in my attitude than He is in my actions. I didn't say He's not interested in our actions. I'm just saying far more in our attitude. Attitude is how I react. Attitude is this is this thing that I have and how I respond. Your life is really going to be the sum of your actions and your reactions. How you react to things makes a very big difference. And the Holy Spirit stands there and He says, I want to help you to react, respond. I want to help you that I will be, that you will be a person that is not reacting negatively but responding godly. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to help you with that. Sometimes He's going to help you to keep your mouth shut. 
Sometimes He will help you to just be kind when you feel like not being kind. He's there to help you. It's okay if you don't feel naturally to be nice when things are hard. That's why you have the Holy Spirit. You rely on Him. That's why these attitudes are called the fruit of the Spirit. They're not called the works of your discipline, your trying and your hard efforts. They are the fruit of the Spirit. Do, are you involved in them? Meaning, do you have to make still conscious decisions? 100%. But the Holy Spirit is the initiator and He is the helper with this attitude. Uh, I was uh, yesterday um, going, my sister-in-law asked us to come to, to her house to lift some mats and to put them on some truck of some person that came from another city and to take her to another city, da da da. Um, and we were just supposed to be there to help with the mats. And it was inconvenient uh, because I was meeting after the stream with our youth pastor. And so as I'm meeting with him and I was like, hey, let's go with me. You'll help me pick those mats. And then, you know, we're fasting. So physically, I'm not like, let's go and super buff. And uh, part of me doesn't want to go and help with those mats because I'm like, hey, I have more spiritual things to do. But I know that I, I got to help um, my, my sister-in-law. So we arrive there and I get a text message. Hey, the guy that's going to come to pick up those mats where we have to load them, he's running late. So he's going to be about uh, to 20 to maybe 25 minutes late. And you know, part of me is like, man, I don't have time for this. Um, I'm just meeting with our youth pastor. He doesn't have time for this. I got to run. And, and there's this like frustration that begins to build up. And I remember I walk into the house and at that moment I said, Holy Spirit, help me <laughs> to be nice. That's all. And so and to just wait because one of the fruits, attitudes of the Holy Spirit is uh, self-control. And gentleness not like frustration you see the fruit of the Spirit is not frustration and so the situation was frustrating I do not like when people come late that's one of my pet peeves and kind of oh. but the Holy Spirit helps us with that and I remember we just sat there waited for 20 minutes the truck came loaded the mats and they were heavy like 19 of them it's tiring my brother was there also and um, our youth pastor and you know and I left I got a text message from my sister-in-law it's like, hey, I'm, I'm so grateful that you came. I know that you didn't have to. You have so many other things going on. And, you know, I showed up. That was my action. But what made a big difference wasn't the action. It was the attitude. Because I could have been frustrated. I could have been angry, you know, snappy, um, you know, very just uh, uh, kind of on the edge. And, and trust me, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to do. But the Holy Spirit is there. To help me with my attitude. There are people watching right now, you are destroying your life because of your attitude. In fact, your attitude is keeping you from your altitude. You can go higher, but your attitude is keeping you lower. And guess who wants to help you with your attitude? The Holy Spirit. So that the way you respond, that you don't bark, but you speak to people. You don't um, attack, but there is a sense of long-suffering, gentleness and self-control in your attitude. Naturally, it will probably not happen. That's why it's going to happen supernaturally through the help of the Holy Spirit. Come on, we all need that help, right? <laughs> we all need help with our attitude. If you need help with your attitude, drop that hand emoji, hand up emoji, because we all need, I need that help. That's one of the areas I lean on the Holy Spirit so much throughout my day because there's, you know, my way and there is my preferences, there's things that I like and when things go outside of those preferences and the things that I like, you know, we tend to get frustrated, angry. Um, and some of us, when we are angry and frustrated, we sin. And so, and uh, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to help us. And so, the tendency is to, oh no, I'm going to try harder. And trying harder is not going to help you. I think that we have to surrender more. So my approach to fixing my attitude has not been, I'm just going to work on my attitude. I've tried that before. It, it's hard, it's discouraging. I, I fail so many times. Um, my approach has changed since, since I met the Holy Spirit. I realized since the attitude is one of the things He's working on, I'm like, why do I need to work on it if He can work on it? And it's not that I'm taking the back seat and not doing anything. No, it's just 
And those moments when the frustration builds and there's a buildup of, I'm going to explode. I just take a few seconds. Sometimes it could be a little bit longer in my own heart. I don't say this out loud. And I just reach for that hand of the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, help. In fact, let's drop this in the chat. Holy Spirit, help. That prayer and something happens with your emotions. They seem to kind of subside. You still feel that, but you subside and then He helps you to control your tongue because that's when the attitude shows up many times. Your facial expression because, you know, you can have mad, frustrated, um, dropping things, you know, screaming, throwing things, slamming the door or your physical reaction becomes just controlled and, you know, you're obvious that the atmosphere is tense. Everything is tense, but a few more seconds, a few more seconds and the peace begins to fill your heart and you're like Jesus sleeping in the storm. You're like Jesus, you're um, walking through this situation um, completely not being controlled and being manipulated and bullied by that situation to act out of character. And then you're looking back at yourself, you're like, man, I'm not like that. That's not my natural disposition. That's not my natural response. Oh, that was the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, meaning He helped me with my attitude. I asked for help. He offered it to me. So throughout your day, just ask for help. When you, when you see you're losing it, when you see you're about to lose it, you see you're about to explode, uh, when you see that the tension is building up, when you see you're about to go over um, was allowed, just say, Holy Spirit, help. The third thing the Holy Spirit wants to help is He wants to strengthen your inner person. He wants to strengthen that inner person. See, we have a body, we have a soul, and we are a spirit. Many Christians, their problem, our problem, is that we live not out of our inner man, but we become soulish Christians. Soulish Christians are Christians that live mainly on their emotions, they rely on their mind, um, they don't live out of the spirit. They don't live out of their inner man. And one of the reasons why we don't live out of our inner man is because, or our inner man doesn't dictate our decisions and our direction, is because the inner man is not strengthened. And so we have our soul do most of the living. And instead of living through our spirit, because our spirit man is not strengthened, our soul is the one that takes the lead in ma majority of our decisions. And we become what the Bible calls a soulish people, not spiritual but soulish. And we fall into carnality very fast. Ephesians 3.16 tells us that God wants to, according to the riches of His glory, to make you be strengthened with might through His spirit in the inner man. See, you shouldn't be living in your soul, you should be speaking to your soul. David spoke to his soul. Many times he would say, soul, why are you disquieted in me? Why are you discouraged? Come on, praise the Lord. So the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. The spirit of the man can be strengthened. Now guess who is the one that does the strengthening with might? He doesn't necessarily want to strengthen your soul. He wants to renew our mind. He wants to um, guide our emotions, but the Holy Spirit's part on building a muscle is in your inner man. Why? Because if your inner man is strong, you can persevere, you can overcome, you can last, you, you, can, you can do a lot of things for God. This is kind of what I've been realizing in my young walk with the Lord. And that is this, the, the further I go with Jesus, the more He begins to trust me and the more responsibilities I begin to acquire. Responsibilities, ministry responsibilities pr create pressures. They create a weight and they can really take a toll on your life. So when I was younger, my prayer was always, Lord, lighten my load. Lord, take away these burdens. Lord, take away the stress. Take away the responsibilities. God, I don't want to be responsible for my bills. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for my insurance. God, I, I don't want to grow up. I want to stay a kid. I want to, you know, like when I was a teenager, I wanted to grow up. And then as I started to grow up, like I remember first time that I had to pay for my phone, first time I had to pay for my insurance. And then I bought a property when I was younger at the age of 20 and I had to pay for property. And then something happened there and um, you know, the bathroom flooded or something and they called me and I'm like, uh, why are you calling me? Call my dad. 
You know, because I was so used to being taken care of and now I have to take responsibility. And I was like, I don't want to grow up. I'm like, they lied to me. Being an adult is deceptive. It's hard. It's annoying. It's exhausting. You know, our youth group, I was a youth pastor. It wasn't growing. And I thought that was hard until the youth group started to grow. And I realized, oh, this is so much harder. And the drama comes in. And this kid likes this kid. Then uh, this person fell asleep with the, uh, excuse me, fell asleep. They uh, slept with this person. What do we do with this now? And then this person doesn't like me. And this person said something. And then there's a gossip. And then there's, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to be a part of this. I just want to disappear and hide in the desert and have no responsibilities, have no pressures, and have no weight that I carry. Or God, please take this away. I don't want to have this. I'm tired of this. But then as I started to study the Scriptures, I recognized God doesn't always take away the weight. Because if He takes, the way, takes away the weight, He takes away our calling, our responsibilities, our families. He takes away maturity. And I started to see in the Scriptures this reference renewing the strength, strengthening with might. And then a light went on. My prayer changed. Instead of praying, God, take away the pressure, take away the weight. God, take away all my critics. God, take away my responsibilities. God, take away all these people that are just kind of causing me to be overwhelmed. My prayer changed. And I started to pray, Lord, strengthen Holy Spirit, strengthen me for the assignment that I have. So I'm not running away from pressure. I'm not running away from stress. I'm not, I'm talking about good stress that comes with part of being called, having responsibility, leading your family, leading a ministry, uh, leading a business. I'm not running away from that. I'm running to my secret place and I ask the Holy Spirit, who is my helper to add me strength? Because the calling and the pressure that I encounter is equal to His strength. So when I don't have His strength, I feel overwhelmed. But when He adds strength to me, and guess what happens? I can run, I can walk, and I can soar. Not because I'm brilliant, smart, educated, and connected, but because I am strengthened in the inner man. So how does the Holy Spirit wants to help you? Most likely, the tasks you are facing are bigger than you. Responsibilities you are facing are bigger than you. There's some of you watching your single mom. Odds are against you. You can't do it on your own. You feel overwhelmed. In fact, you feel like God has given you more than you can handle. Did you know why? It's because He is relying on you to rely on the Holy Spirit. He will always give you more than you can handle because He will never give you more than he can handle. Ooh, that's a fire right there. Drop this in the chat. God will always give you more than you can handle because He will never give you more than what He can handle. That means the Holy Spirit is there to help you handle things, help you to strengthen you in the inner man, strengthen you to lead your family when you are on one income, strengthen you to lead your ministry when you feel overwhelmed, strengthen you to lead your wife and your children when as a man you feel ill-equipped and you never had a good role model, your dad was never there, strengthen you to lead your business when you are branching out, your business is exploding and you're like, I've never been in this area, I don't know what to do, I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I am just tired, strengthen you when your business is going through a very difficult time, economy, people are, you know, are not buying your product anymore. You're like, man, what do I do? I, I feel overwhelmed. I feel, I feel exhausted. Guess what you need? You don't always need a lighter load. Sometimes you need greater strength. Let me say that again. Are you ready for this? Sometimes we don't need a lighter load. We need greater strength. God doesn't just take away the load. He renews our strength. The Holy Spirit is there to strengthen your inner man that will match to the weight, the pressure, and the stress that comes with living and leading in your life. Come on somebody. God will always give you more than you can handle because He will never give you more than what 
Holy Spirit can handle. So if you're handling everything on your own, this is what's going to happen. You of course are going to be dropping your responsibilities. You're going to be quitting certain things. You're going to be saying, I can't do this. Um, uh, I, I can't do this. I can't do this. Yeah, I, I can do this, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, the Spirit who strengthens me. So one of the things the Holy Spirit helps me personally a lot is he helps me with my attitude. He helps me to live a holy life and he helps me to increase my strength when I feel like my load is greater than my strength. And honestly, I feel that every week. I feel that my load is greater than my strength every single week. Without the Holy Spirit, I can't do that. I can't be healthy and function because load is heavy. The load of just being an adult is heavy. We're not even talking about ministry right now. We're not even talking about demonic attacks. No, just the load of just, it's, it's heavy. Okay, and many people quit mid-age crisis and people just walk out on their marriages. They numb themselves with alcohol because a lot of people are overwhelmed. They don't live out of overflow, they live out of overwhelmness. And to order, in order to not live out of the overwhelmness, we can feel overwhelmed, but not to live out of that place, we have to constantly go to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, what needs to change? Have I put more on my plate than I should or do I need more strength? And usually you will see Holy Spirit will guide you and give you usually more strength, more peace, more courage and then you'll walk into the same battle renewed in your strength. Number four thing that the Holy Spirit wants to help you right now, that is He wants to lead you. Holy Spirit wants to lead you. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. He wants to lead you. Drop this in the chat. The Holy Spirit wants to lead me. He wants to lead you. That means sometimes it's not about reducing your weight or even increasing your strength. Sometimes it's about changing your approach. What you were doing maybe was great, but what if there is a better way of doing it? For example, you're fishing all night, cannot catch fish. The goal isn't to go keep on fishing. The goal is to know where to fish. Go into the deep. The goal is to put your nets on the other side. So Holy Spirit can guide you. And that's what I love the Holy Spirit is because He not only gives me strength when I am weak to match my assignment, the Holy Spirit also helps me with my reactions, with my attitudes. He makes me holy, but then He guides me. Sometimes it's the impressions. You wake up during the sleep, you get this vision and you get this dream. I need to change this. I need to tweak this. And then you tweak it, you see a fresh flow of God's grace. You know, we need to change the approach, the way we do our customer service. For example, if you're a businessman. You know, I need to do something different in my marriage. I'm going to try to do this to my spouse and see where this goes. And uh, We need to tweak something in our ministry. And so, yes, we don't want to over-spiritualize every single thing, but as Christians, we just got to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Sometimes it's not about grinding it and pushing it through. Sometimes it's about changing our approach. How do we change that approach? The leading of the Holy Spirit. He gives us impressions. He gives us pictures, He gives us promptings and He gives us these leadings that we experience. Sometimes it could come in the form of a thought that lingers and gives you a sense of peace, sense of assurance, sense of, um, wow, this is brilliant. And it's almost like you know you didn't come up with that. It came outside of you. Sometimes it's not even something you're thinking about. It just comes to you. From the Holy Spirit and so I pay attention to those things because that is how the Holy Spirit can lead you. Sometimes He can lead you through a prophetic word from somebody or somebody can come and speak and they're speaking about something and you're listening, listening and then boom there's that one thing they said that made a change for you. So I pay attention to that because if the Holy Spirit is my friend, if the Holy Spirit is my guide, He will guide me. Now what I love about the Holy Spirit is this, He does not drive people, He leads people. Drop this in the chat, the Holy Spirit does not drive, He leads. He doesn't drive people, He leads. We drive out demons, um, 
the ships are being driven, we drive cars. Driving means you force an object to do what it wants. That's driving. Leading means you are guiding slowly and giving that being to follow you. You lead children. You lead people. Holy Spirit leads us. That means we are involved and we can choose not to participate. It's kind of like if you are on the road and you have somebody that is following you. You're not driving their car, right? You're driving your car but they're following you. They can keep a distance closer or further but they're following you. And that's how Holy Spirit, He leads us. He doesn't drive us. He doesn't drive us into depression. He doesn't drive us into this non-stop work all the time and you, you feel like in my generation people are driven, driven by success, driven by their passion, driven by ambition, driven by dreams. Holy Spirit leads. That's why we are Spirit-filled. We are Spirit-led. Don't live a driven life. Don't be like the culture live Spirit-led life. Pastors, listen to me. Leaders, listen to me. Vlad, listen to me. <laughs> live being led by the Spirit. Therefore, when you're led by the Spirit, He has a pace of grace where you don't burn out, where you don't experience, I can't do this anymore. But even if the moments come like that, He helps you to get through. You want to find a pace? that has peace in it, allow the Spirit to lead you instead of your ambitions to drive you. Hallelujah. Drop number one in, uh, in the chat right now if this is helping somebody that the Holy Spirit wants to lead us, not drive us. Amen. Now let's go to number five. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you. This, the Holy Spirit wants to help you with this. Number five, the Holy Spirit wants to teach you. John 16, 13, it says that the Spirit of truth, when He guides you, He will guide you into all truth. He will speak, not on His own authority, but whatever He hears, he will, he will speak and He will tell you all things to come. This is huge. All of us have a Bible. I believe all of us are reading the Bible and we have to allow every day to invite the Holy Spirit into our devotionals and allow the Holy Spirit to teach us. Now, it's important to read commentaries. It's important to read um, other notes that you have in your Bible. But what's more important is to allow the Spirit to quicken the Word. When He will teach you, it doesn't mean He will teach you something contrary to the Bible. It just means He quickens. He makes the Word come alive. The Bible is not just an ordinary book. When you read it, the author is present with you. The author is the Holy Spirit. You have to, almost sometimes it's best before you start reading to say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, quicken that Word. Holy Spirit, make it come alive. If you read the Bible without the help of the Holy Spirit, it's like eating uncooked rice. With the help of the Holy Spirit, that rice gets cooked and it feeds you. When it just becomes a letter of the law, the, the letter uh, without the Holy Spirit's help, life is there. But when the Holy Spirit comes to help, it becomes the rhema word, it becomes quick and it feeds you. It's not that you get some weird insights that contradict the Bible. I'm not talking about that. That is not the teaching of the Holy Spirit. That's just a uh, pure heresy. But quickening of the Holy Spirit is He gives you life. That word quicken gets quickened. It gives you life, a revelation that comes from that information which eventually ends up being a manifestation in a transformation in your life. So as you read the information of God's Word, the Holy Spirit quickens it. It becomes a revelation of God's Word to you and that revelation leads to manifestation in your life which results in the transformation in your circumstances. That's the difference the Holy Spirit makes. Now the sixth thing the Holy Spirit wants to help you today is He wants to reveal your future. Luke chapter 2, 26, it was revealed by Him, to Him by the Holy Spirit that He will not see death before He would see, see Lord's Christ. 
we see in Acts 20, 23, that Holy Spirit testified in every city saying the chains and tribulations await Paul. So we see this happening that the Holy Spirit loves to help reveal our future. Sometimes it can come in the form of a vision, it can come in the form of a dream, it can come in the form of an image and sometimes it can come in the form of a prophetic word and sometimes it can come in the form of a desire that it's almost like the Lord gives you this through sanctified imagination, He gives you this desire and this picture of what is going to come in your life and sometimes it's just a clear audible voice that this is what's going to happen. And so when the Holy Spirit became more real to me um, as a person and I started to develop a relationship with Him and I talk about this in my Host the Holy Ghost book on how that happened and how you can happen and I believe that by reading this book the same thing will happen to you. You will go even further. But one of the things that started to happen with me as a youth pastor, it was, I couldn't explain it at first, is in a prayer I would see an image of a sanctuary filled with young people. Now mind you, it's been 10 years that we couldn't see more than like three rows filled and it's only on one side. And I preached my best, I gave my best and now I'm seeing the future. And I would close my eyes, I wouldn't think of this but the Holy Spirit would paint this image of what's about to happen. It would fill me with so much joy it got to the point, even as I'm speaking, I feel the goosebumps. It got to the point where I almost felt like it's what's going to happen. And I became, it's almost like I already see this happening. I would open my eyes, of course, I see the sanctuary empty. I close my eyes, I see it filled. And maybe two years after that, exactly the vision, this image, the future that the Holy Spirit painted. Now, some people, they plan their future. They're like, oh, this is what we want to be. That's different. I'm talking about collaborating and partnering with the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, where are you taking us? Where are you taking me? Holy Spirit, what are you doing in my future? And He begins to paint that image. I remember when the first time I saw a large stadium filled like an oval, like that kind of stadium that, that was filled that I was preaching in. I was seeing flashes of it during worship. I'm worshiping, I'm not thinking about nothing like stadiums or preaching and I'm seeing this flashes in my, in my, in my eye, in my, almost like in my spirit and I get this like inside right away, like this sense of knowing that's what's going to happen, you know, in the, in the church. So when I went to the Philippines, this was the first time I actually spoke in front of that audience that I was seeing the flashes of it for years already. But the flashes of the Holy Spirit's vision glimpses, they were not about where I'm going to be speaking occasionally, but where our church is going to be one day. And there is still one more thing in those flashes that I saw that I can't say right now on this live stream, but I know it will happen when it will come to pass. Um, but Holy Spirit tells us the future. I remember when it even came to my income, when we started to sow nine years ago, a particular amount, one time. And I remember in prayer, I felt the Holy Spirit prompted and He says, one day this large sacrifice is going to be your monthly income. There's going to be, I'm going to provide the finances and it, that's going to come in as, as that. At the time, I remember even thinking about it gave me like, I'm like, that's not, that's not possible. How's that even going to happen? Like Mary who looked at the angel and said, how can I have a baby when I don't even know a man? And, and the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And I felt like the Holy Spirit said, He says, because you're obedient, because you're walking in this, I'm going to supply your needs and that's what I'm going to do. Again, that's, I'm sharing my personal example of how I feel the leading of the Spirit in regards to revealing of my future. I believe the Holy Spirit has the future. He knows the future and He loves to give us glimpses of that future through visions, dreams, impressions, um, sanctified imagination, prophetic words and as well as sometimes even through an audible voice. I love to keep a journal and I write those things down so that when they do come to pass, 
I have a point of reference, kind of like building your own little history with God. And so um, now notice that most of the things that I'm sharing with you guys deal with your personal walk with God. Um, less with how you can minister to other people, but more with how you're being ministered to by the Holy Spirit. The seventh thing the Holy Spirit wants to help you with is to help you worship. He wants to help you worship. Yes, in the Philipp, uh, Philippians 3.3 3, it says that we who worship God in the Spirit. The Jesus also said that God expects people to worship Him in the Spirit. Now that could relate human spirit, but in Philippians 3.3 3, it says we worship God in the Spirit. He wants to help you worship. Holy Spirit, we don't worship the Holy Spirit, though we can. Holy Spirit is God but the Holy Spirit helps us with worship, to worship God, to worship Christ. The Holy Spirit doesn't draw attention to Himself. He puts all the attention on Jesus. He comes to worship Jesus. So we are Spirit-filled and Christ-centered. Because some people take the Holy Spirit and they begin to treat the Holy Spirit in the way that the Bible doesn't give us authority to do so. Do you remember when Jesus came on this earth and they wanted to make Him a king? Now was Jesus a king? Yes, but He left them. He didn't let them make Him into a king. Now one day He will be a king, but when He came on this earth, His assignment was to, to die, not to rule and reign, but to rule and reign in our hearts, but not in the physical. One day He will rule and reign. And so was it wrong for them to make Him a physical king? Yes, and He left them. I think some Christians do similar thing with the Holy Spirit. They don't recognize Holy Spirit's help and assignment. His help is to worship God and to draw people to Christ. He is not on this earth to be worshipped. He is God and do we worship Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? Yes, but His assignment is that you worship the Father, you worship the Son, you are drawn to Jesus. His goal is to glorify Jesus, to speak of what Jesus is saying. So as you're developing intimacy with the Holy Spirit, as you're being led by the Holy Spirit, always remain Christ-centered. This is what the Holy Spirit loves. The moment we begin to be Spirit-centered, we are Spirit-filled and we are Spirit-led, but we are Christ-centered. We are the bride of Christ as Christians. And so we got to keep our eyes on Christ. We got to worship Christ. We got to worship God. And the Holy Spirit helps us with that. So I hope this kind of brought some clarity so that we don't go into this stuff where we begin to overemphasize and draw all the attention on the Spirit when the Spirit is actually focused on getting all of your attention on the Son, on Jesus. Amen. Yes, Jesus baptizes us in the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit baptizes us into Christ, the Bible says. We are baptized into Christ. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit draws all the attention on Jesus and He helps us to worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So don't miss that because we can fall into some other things that these people fell into when they tried to make Jesus into a physical king and He just quietly left them. The Holy Spirit is not going to like when we don't worship Christ when we don't glorify God because He is sent to help us worship Jesus. Number eight, what the Holy Spirit wants to help you with is He wants to comfort you. He wants to comfort you. It's actually one of His names. He's a comforter. In the book of Acts 9.31 it says that, and the church walked in the fear of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Who does He comfort? He comforts those who are afflicted and sometimes He can afflict those who are too comfortable. Drop this in the chat. The Holy Spirit comforts those who are afflicted and sometimes He can afflict those who are way too comfortable. He comforts us when we are grieving, when we are hurting, when we are suffering. Sometimes when you're going through the valley of the shadow of death and you come to God's presence, the Bible says, for you are with me and therefore I fear no evil. You will feel the blanket of the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Comfort that doesn't make sense. Comfort that doesn't necessarily register with your mind, but it's in your spirit. 
and it oozes into the rest of your life the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Now this is what I recognized. If you don't go to the comforter when things are hard and difficult, you and I will seek to find comfort in other areas. When we are hurting and suffering, some people find comfort in food, some people find comfort in alcohol, some people seek to find comfort in sex, others seek to find comfort in other things like gambling, like video games. They're pretty much numbing themselves because they're hurting. You as a Christian have a comforter. You can go to Him. He is available. He can comfort you without side effects, without addictions, but with, with joy, without bad consequences. The Holy Spirit is my comforter. Drop this in the chat. Go to the comforter when all comforts fail. Let me say that again. Drop this in the comments. Go to the comforter when all comforts fail. When I say comforter, I don't mean sleep, the fridge, alcohol, gambling or sex. I mean the Holy Spirit is our comforter. We all go through seasons in life where comforts fail, where we barely make it through financially, where our relationship hangs on a thread, where we feel like we're walking on a thin ice in our ministry. It's hard. It's difficult. And we have a comforter who comforts us when our comforts fail. Come on somebody, drop this in the chat. We have a comforter, the Holy Spirit, who comforts us when our comforts fail. Now I'm ready for number nine. The Holy Spirit wants to give you power. He not only wants to give you comfort, He also wants to supply you with dunamis power. This power, of course, is for ministry. This power is for service. This power is not for show. This power is not to make you powerful. This power is to make you useful. Drop this in the chat. The power of the Holy Spirit is not to make us powerful, but it's to make us useful in our purpose, meaning to make us effective, to make us people that can do what only God can do in our calling and our purpose. And now the last thing that I want to share with you is the Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship. He wants to have communion. I will go even as far as to say He wants to have friendship with you. Imagine having a relationship with Jesus in the body, physically like disciples had. Do you know that in the Spirit you can have similar relationship with the Holy Spirit? You can talk to Him. He wants to talk to you. He wants to be your close companion, your friend that you're never alone again in your life. Jesus has grace to offer to us according to Corinthians. The Father offers us love and the Spirit gives us the fellowship. And this fellowship is incredible. It's beautiful. It fills our life with meaning, purpose, love and fulfillment. And that's what He wants to offer to you. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be your companion. He wants to be walking alongside with you. Tongues are good, gifts are good, but He is the greatest gift, the Holy Spirit. And He wants to share Himself with you, to be in fellowship with you. Now, you may say, well, I'm not special. None of us are. I'm not deserving. None of us are. Nothing is unique about me. So is nothing unique about me either. It's not something you deserve. 
any more than grace is something you deserve. Love is something you deserve. We don't deserve love of God. We don't deserve grace of Jesus. Nor do we deserve the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. It's His gift to us. That's why that verse ends with, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And then it adds this thing, thank you, Paul. He says, be with you all, meaning you included. You included. The Holy Spirit wants to have fellowship with all of us. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is not only for the elite, it's for everyone. Drop this in the chat. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit is not for the elite, it's for everyone. My desire through this stream and my desire through the host the Holy Ghost book is honestly help everyone. Bring the cookies on the lower shelf because I struggled with this myself. As a younger person always feeling that I did not you know get into not special why will the Holy Spirit you know waste his time on me um, he, he could just be spending time with other people I'm you know I'm glad I know myself I know my weaknesses I know my shortcomings I know um, things I need to improve I, I, I know myself and while I definitely never disqualify myself from the grace of Jesus because without his grace I'm gonna go to hell I definitely don't disqualify myself from the love of God you know because I, I need God's love but the fellowship of the Holy Spirit or the communion of the Holy Spirit I always felt like I just I'm not worthy of that I'm not holy enough I'm not dedicated enough I'm not committed enough I don't fast enough I don't pray enough I don't read the Bible and it's always not enough always not enough and it's that works mentality that could come in and disqualify us and then you know when I couldn't disqualify myself because of my good works. I disqualified myself because of who I was. You know, I'm not enough. And this later part of this verse broke that stronghold where he says, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I remember in prayer, the Lord challenging me and He's saying, what if you will embrace the gift from the Holy Spirit, the fellowship, the same way you embrace grace, the same way you embrace love. It's His gift to you. It doesn't say fellowship with the Spirit. It says fellowship of the Spirit, meaning it's He wants to offer that to you. I said, Lord, but, you know, and I had these buds. And I remember the Lord in prayer prompted me and He said, do you think the Holy Spirit is not aware of your shortcomings? Do you think He's not aware of your potential to mess up, of your inconsistencies, of how you feel about yourself? He is. And He still chooses to abide with you. He knows that you are a human and He is going to help you. So embrace the Holy Spirit's gift. Embrace His fellowship. Welcome Him in. Don't shut yourself off and say, no, 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 no. That's, that's just not for me. I just, you know, grace is good. I want to go to heaven. Love is good. I want a little bit of heaven to live in me. Um, and then the fellowship. Yeah, that's for the that's for those preachers. That's for those people. Uh, that's just not for me. I'm a single mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a, I'm a college student. I, you know, I, I have a lot of problems, and I, that's just not for me. Like Holy Spirit stuff. Like that stuff is holy, and I'm not holy. I'm not good enough. Uh, plus, you know, I'm not like doing anything super significant that changes the world. So he's not gonna waste himself on me. You're wrong. You are important to God. Jesus died for you. And no matter what the scope and the size of your calling, your contribution to the kingdom and to this world, the Holy Spirit wants to fellowship with you. He wants to be with you, chooses to dwell with you, and He wants to have a relationship with you. How do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? You first believe the truth that He wants to have a relationship with you more than how you want to have a relationship with Him. Open yourself up to that because it's in the Bible. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Somebody drop Amen in the chat if you believe that. Hallelujah. Amen.
men. That's how Paul finished that Corinthians. And that is how I'm going to finish this teaching. Amen. Amen. Now, let's pray for um, people today. In fact, what I would like to pray for today, I know last month's um, live stream we prayed for deliverance. Yesterday we prayed for healing. But today what I would like to pray for as we are launching this book in 12 days, some of you will be re-watching this when the book is already out. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will become real to you. I want to pray that God the Father, Jesus, will reveal to you and that you will have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. That you will live Christ-centered, Spirit-filled and Spirit-led life. I want to ask the Holy Spirit to come upon you right now and become more real to you than ever before so that you will walk in the Holy Spirit. That's my desire and that's going to be my prayer. So if you are ready for that prayer and if you are able to, you're not driving, I want you to place your hand upon your heart. Father, I thank you right now for giving us your Son who died on the cross for us. I thank you that you also gave us your Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you that the Spirit came as a promise from you that the Holy Spirit came because Jesus asked for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will ask the Father and He will send you the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is the promise of the Father. I ask you right now for every brother and sister of Christ. I ask you for those people who maybe feel unworthy, for those who need a lot of help, all of us, Lord. The Holy Spirit you sent to help us. So we're not doing our life alone. We're not relying on our own strength, not, not relying on the arm of the flesh, but relying on the Holy Spirit. I ask you right now, precious Jesus, would you reveal your spirit to everyone that's watching, that will be re-watching and listening on the podcast? Lord, would you just break the strongholds of unworthiness? Would you break the strongholds of disqualification where we disqualified ourselves would you uh, break away maybe traditional teaching that viewed the spirit as a wind fire force or some kind of an impersonal force or uh, break away guilt shame lord in the name of jesus let the traditional teaching that is not that is not in line with your word let them be broken that we will rely on you. Lord, I break the words that were spoken maybe by people in authority that nobody's going to help us. We're alone. That if we don't do it for ourselves, nobody will do it for ourselves. And we have developed this life where we always do it independently of others. And it spills into our walk with you. But we, we got it. We, we, we don't need help. We don't ask for help. Holy Spirit, I invite you right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you, could you make us holy? I ask you, would you help us with our attitude? Holy Spirit, I ask you, would you help us to know the future? Would you teach us when we read your word? Holy Spirit, I ask you, would you lead us into the right path? Holy Spirit, I ask you, would you give us your power for witness to fulfill our assignment? Holy Spirit, I ask you, would you strengthen us in our inner man so that our strength will match our assignment? And Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we say good morning to you. We say good evening to you. Be our guide. Be our comforter. We apologize, we repent for going to alternative devil's comforts, these cheap comforts that come with a very high price later on instead of going to you. We want to lean on you, rely on you, especially during this fast. Would you strengthen us in our inner man? 
Would you reveal your word to us? Would you help us to worship Jesus? Would you help us to worship the Father? Would you help us to live our life heaven focused, eternity focused? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, drop that amen in the chat. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wanted to appreciate each and every one of you for joining me on the live stream today. Wanted to also um, ask you if you've enjoyed these this stream today, if this was a blessing to you spiritually, I want to invite you to consider praying, uh, to consider um, partnering uh, with the, our ministry. Um, this book, when it comes out, it will be also available free of charge in Spanish, in Russian and in English. We are offering all of our books uh, for free as well as we have courses about 90,000 students um, in our courses and they're able to do that because of your contribution. Reading plans that come out once a month. Um, we reach m literally millions of people every month just through YouTube and so all these things we're able to do because of your contribution. So thank you for those who are partnering. If the Lord puts on your heart to increase your partnership it will be much appreciated so we can go further. We are raising our quality of videos, even what you're seeing, a lot of content because I really sense that this next season the Lord wants me to improve um, the content. You know, my goal isn't to grow the, the platform. My goal is to grow you guys and that for you to grow spiritually. And then the God will take care of the platform. But it does take resources to do what we do. I am a pastor of a local church as well as a husband and um, I do travel occasionally. In fact, this weekend I will be in Tennessee and so it takes a lot of time. Without a solid team, this will never be possible. And so the reason why I'm able to do it consistently, I'm able to do it effectively um, mainly because of the team. And that is possible because of you, my team, who are giving, praying and so if the Lord puts in your heart to do a one time your most generous gift, it will be much appreciated or become a reoccurring partner. It will be a lot more helpful. You can do it by going to pastorvlad.org forward slash partner. It's the best way to do it because there you can track your giving. There you can change your giving. You can uh, set up reoccurring giving and, and then we can actually stay in contact with you. And then every quarter we have partners and giver, people who give a special meeting. You can also give through Cash App and Venmo, PayPal, Zelle or send it in the mail, whichever way is most convenient to you. But from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for uh, fasting with us, praying with us, listening, uh, following and honestly growing in Jesus Christ. I meet you guys all throughout my trips who come and say, hey, um, I'm watching, my life has been impacted and changed and that brings me so much joy because that's the reason that I'm doing. I'm not doing this um, for myself. I really, when I started this, the Lord challenged me from the beginning. He said, don't do this to build a platform. He said, use the platform I give you to build my people. So that's, if I could summarize my YouTube strategy and that is this, or my ministry strategy is not to use people to build my platform but to use my platform to build people. That's why we're doing fasting. That's why we're doing Bible memory verses. That's why I have courses. That's why I have books. All of that is to build believers, to become disciple makers, ministers for God. So thank you for sowing into that vision, believing in that vision and supporting by watching, participating and also giving. If you have not signed up for our emails yet, make sure that you do that. Um, you will be able to stay in touch anytime that we send reminders like for example we send a reminder for this fast when we finish fasting we send you little bits and pieces of what we talked about and then um, every Wednesday I think it's every Wednesday that we send an email with short encouragements I promise not to spam you or sell your data to other people or abuse it uh, but to use it respectfully and responsibly so thank you for that